Hi YouTube and welcome into uh, the finest pub that one did ever see. Today we are going to be doing a quick rundown of demonologists. We're just going to be showing the bare basics basically of what each piece of equipment does. So grab your beer and let's get into it. So if you are unaware, Demonologist is a new ghost hunting game that has been released by Clock Wizard Games. Basically what you are going to do is very similar to a lot of the other ghost hunting games that you may have seen previously. You're going to go around, you're going to look for the evidence to determine the ghost type, but once you have done that, you can then unlock the optional objectives. Once those are complete, you can then exercise the ghost. There's plenty to do on it, plenty of jump scares, plenty of things to purchase, and a lot of fun. So starting out, keeping it nice and simple, it's your bare basic flashlight. Everyone knows what this is going to do. It is going to illuminate a certain amount of area in front of you so that you can see what you are doing. Up next is your EMF reader. You are going to use this to help you locate the ghost and look for evidence for EMF 5. On top of that it is also directional based, so you need to be pointing towards the object to get the higher readings. Up next is the ESG reader. This can be placed on the ground and if it is a potential evidence for the ghost you are dealing with, the ghost can interact with it, leaving a silhouette of itself above the device and making an audible sound, making you aware that this was evidence also if you do not happen to see it. The easel canvas, much like the ESG, is placed on the ground and if it isn't evidence for the ghost you are dealing with, eventually it will interact with it and leave you a lovely little drawing. The exoglass is an amazing little tool. You use this to find evidence of ectoplasmic stains. On top of that, it's used for certain secondary objectives. On the first map of looking for a girl sitting in a chair, and on the second map, you're looking for the time of death of the ghost. The spirit box, a tool many of you will have used on previous ghost hunting games. You talk into the box, and if spirit box is an evidence, the ghost will respond to you. This is also indicated that you've received the evidence by a flashing little ghost on top of the spirit box. Next up we have the UV light, a nice simple tool looking for fingerprint evidence. As it stands, fingerprints can be found on light switches and doors that the ghost has interacted with. For the freezing temperatures evidence, there are two ways to determine this. One, if the room is already freezing, you can see your breath. And two, you can use the thermometer. The thermometer is also a good way to locate the ghost. When you do find freezing on the thermometer, you will notice that it will dip below zero and the line will turn blue. As it stands, the photo camera is only used for a secondary objective on the abandoned house map, which is to take a photo of the ghost. Nice, simple tool, point, click, done. Like the photo camera, the candle currently only serves the purpose of a secondary objective on the abandoned house map. Light the candle, place it on the ground, walk away and wait. Sanity pills do exactly what they say on the bottle. They will restore some of your sanity when used. The tripod camera is a nice simple tool. Place it down where you want, make sure it's facing the correct way. Go back out to the tent, check the monitor and you can see if there is any easel, ESG, any activity going on. The crucifix. As it stands, there is only one way to use the crucifix and that is holding it in your hand during a hunt. If the ghost was going to kill you, instead it is going to use up a charge of the crucifix. It has been confirmed there are going to be more uses for this later, as it stands just the one. And this brings me to the two bonus items. These are not ones that you bring with you or that you can purchase. They are random spawns on the map. Those are the Ouija board and the tarot cards. Starting with the Ouija board, you can pick up the board and ask various questions, for example, where are you? This will use a lot of sanity, so be cautious of that, and if you use the board too many times, it may break and start a hunt. Lastly, we have the tarot cards. Pick these up, draw a card, and it will do a random effect from a preset list. This could be instantly starting a hunt, locking the ghost to its room, making the ghost do an activity, instantly killing you or reviving another player, draining or increasing your sanity. So that's it. I hope you found this guide helpful. And if so, please consider liking, subscribing and leaving a comment. And as more updates come, I will try to release up to date information. 